morning. It is Wednesday morning. I just went and dumped Chris off up to a new spot he's going to go check out today. My job today is packing meat and getting the rest of my bull off the mountain. I got to give a shout out to Tom. Uh, it's a Wyoming guy camping right next to us. Only other guy in campground. Super nice guy. Um, he's 65 years old, retired, and he's up here living on the mountain, hunting elk by himself. And I give him a ton of credit. That's he's he is living his dream. He's got a little enclosed trailer all set up for elk hunting and stuff. It's pretty cool. He was nice enough to borrow me this jet sled and I had thought about bringing mine along out here but I didn't he said it works really slick so I'm gonna drag that up in there a mile and we're gonna load up the rest of our meat then I'll probably have to come back for the horns and clean up the rest of my gear I left my bow up there and a bunch of other stuff that I didn't want to carry so we'll get to it Well, that'll get the blood pumping right away in the morning. Wait till I got 200 pounds of meat in here. Oh, well, I'm getting close to the kill site, so I just, I haven't seen much bear sign in this area, but you just want to be aware always of going into a kill site. There's mountain lions out here too, so just something to be aware of. Of course, I got my bow hanging in the tree, so I'll have to throat kick them or something. But I will be getting my meat either way, a bear, mountain lion, whatever. That's my meat. So we're going to continue the last little bit in here, and I think it'll go without a hitch. And all I got to do is work up some burger and pretty much ready to rock, a little cleanup, and two trips will be done. I think we're all good, guys. Yeah, there's nothing to touch this. Nothing's been in here. That's a good feeling. Always gives you a little bit of the heebie-jeebies walking back in on a kill. But we're good. We're going to get to slicing up some burger meat and trim meat. And any scrap I can get off this guy. And then we're going to head off the mountain. And I'll head back. Get the horns and my bowl and the rest of my gear that I left up in here. So here's something... I was kind of in a rush last night when I was trying to get this thing quartered and hung up the flies were on it and I just wanted to be quick and worst thing I don't want that meat to go bad so I didn't have a whole lot of time to do some talking last night but um a uh, thing that worked out super awesome that I brought along last year to Colorado but I never used it because we didn't kill anything but was these space blankets it's just real thin light material and I used it when I was especially when I was by myself butchering because I slid it underneath on the side and then when I flop the hide off and flop a quarter off I could just lay it on there and the meat was nice and clean and didn't wasn't full of pine needles and dirt and crap so I that was something that I've never seen anybody ever mention in any videos or gear dumps or anything like that so Good little, good little trick. Just worked well, and this jet sled I think is gonna work awesome too. That's what your carcass should look like. 
All right, we are done dissecting for today's science class. Clean we got. Quarter there, quarter there, quarter there. Bow, backpack, jet sled. I think what I'm gonna do is this guy, the horns are gonna stay up here with my bow and the rest of my gear. And we're gonna get this load of meat down and then I'll come up with just my pack and we'll pack the horns out and the rest of my crap. I'm gonna wear my pack just so I have water to drink. And we're gonna get jetting out of here with my jet sled or Tom's jet sled. Thanks again, Tom. I really appreciate it. Uh, I thought about bringing one out here. So I'm really interested to see how this works. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't work great. Just the uh, blowdown and stuff might suck to go through, but we'll deal with that when we get there. Another thing I want to show you guys. So my girlfriend's daughter, Abigail, made me this for good luck last year in Colorado. So I've had it on my pack the whole entire time. Looks like it's paid off, Abigail. Thank you. Oh, lots of blow down in here. Yeah. Now we gotta go up the hill. We're just gonna carry these quarters up to the top of the hill. If I get on flat ground again. quarter at a time. This is earning it right here. All right, big boy. Whoa! I'll make them burn. All right, boys, we're back. Back hams are about twice as what a front is. Which I know that anyway. Alright, we only got about three more of those to go through. Back up the mountain I go. Last load and the best load. The horns are coming out. 
But uh, I had a nice conversation with Tom. Man, heck of a nice guy. I'm hope uh, hope I'm doing that when I'm 65 out here elk hunting by myself. But anyways, we got about a mile up the hill and be the last pack out and I'm gonna go check on Chris. I dumped him off this morning before light on the back side of this and he said if he didn't find any sign he's gonna be out to the road around noon or one. So I'm gonna go up and drive around just make sure he ain't out there sitting waiting. Otherwise he's gonna stay until dark. Hopefully find us some sign for tomorrow. But we're gonna pound her up this hillside quick. All right, we're on our last little bit to camp here. I'm ready to get something to eat. I haven't eaten anything all day besides a little breakfast bar. I'm trying to get all this stuff out so I can get up and see how Chris is doing. And that's how you debone an elk. Pretty simple. Um, I have 90, almost 100 quarts plum full of meat. Um, it's all super nice and cold. We got an awesome spring fed creek back here that's probably about 35 degrees. So we're just gonna go dump the coolers and leave them sit in there. I do have some ice in the bottom of this one. But that meat was super cold from last night. It was like 30 degrees last night. Now it's been hanging all night. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to take care of it and get it in coolers. Man, that's going to be a lot of good eats, boys, girls, ladies, gents, whatever. Well, not good news. I just went to go get rid of my elk bones and... My right tire started making a bunch of noise and... I don't know what's wrong with it. It's a ball joint or a 
tie rod end or something, but I think we got to go limper to town tomorrow. It's like 30 miles to town too, so uh, it's got me a little worried, that's for sure, but I don't know. What do you do? We're in the middle of freaking nowhere. So I'll keep you guys posted, but uh, our aisle cut might be done. Um, tomorrow's Thursday. If any luck, we could get it into a shop and get it done by Friday to get back on the road Saturday, hopefully. But we'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. saw a pretty cool white mule deer on the side of the hill but we are currently limping our asses to town because I think the bearing on my right front tire is out we got about 30 miles to the first town we can see what's gonna happen there but it's not gonna be the funnest day that's for sure but hopefully we'll get her fixed and get back hunting maybe tomorrow hopefully Saratoga. Maybe I shouldn't cut that name out so nobody knows where we're hunting at. But, uh, sounds like they had a part in town which is pretty sweet because we're about an hour from any sort of big town. And offered him a little extra cash.